I stand, O Lord, in this holy place. May I worship Thee and behold Thy face. May I be transformed by Thy word and Thy spirit and behold the day of thy power. Good morning. Welcome to Unity's Church. Beautiful, bright, sunshiny fall day. Crisp air. Kind of gets the blood circulating because it makes you shiver just a little bit. <laughs> Have you ever said anything in the minute it crossed your lips you went, ah, should... Well, we were going through the church finances, and there was a receipt up there for some paint in the name Christian written across it. And I was trying to remember, I was, we, we didn't have any project going on. And uh, so I uh, thought, well, I'm going to call down to the paint store and uh, correct their error. So I called them up, and I said, I'm sorry, Mr. Manager, but there are no Christians here at Unity East Church. Somebody got it. <laughs> okay. It's just a little play on words. It just happens that way sometimes. Uh, let's take a moment for prayer. We've got uh, family from the church here. We've got family and friends, acquaintances, uh, co-workers, people that uh, uh, aren't in the optimum of health. They need it. They need a little uh, a jolt of spirit from us, sending out that love, that healing energy to them. So as you sit silently for just a moment, picture in your mind those people that you know that you're familiar with that uh, can use that uh, extra prayer. I send one out to Annie Schulte, one of our uh, members here, who um, is recovering from her surgery, but it's had a little bit difficulty with it. She lost a, a niece not too long ago, and she's got another one just went in the hospital. So she needs that, she needs that spiritual lift. Keep, the, keep her in your thoughts as well. So we take just a moment. We say amen. If you would, take your uh, hymnal out. Let's turn to uh, hymn number 257. Good old hymn. I'm sure many of you remember hearing it from the time you were knee-high to the steering gears on a grasshopper. It was a long time ago.
Well, that was good voice this morning. Nice thing about this platform and the way this church is constructed, from here you can hear every single voice out there singing along. So my hat's off to you. You're all doing a wonderful job. Appreciate it. Let's rise for just a moment and say uh, for our statement of being, which is inside of our bullet, inside the cover. Together, God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. <laughs> good morning, neighbor. <laughs> All right, before we, uh, before we get into um, our lesson for today and our meditation, um, what we want to do is cover a few of the announcements that we have coming up. One of them is the annual membership meeting, which will be next Sunday following the service. Uh, that's where we elect uh, officers to the Board of Trustees. Uh, and by the way, you should have gotten a letter this week stating that uh, there are positions open. There's actually two that are open. Uh, it said in the, in the letter three, that was a typo supposed to be two positions that are open and actually one of them is a an existing board member who has to run again because uh, the term that she was filling expired okay so you can run for two terms uh, but what she had done was filled one year of somebody who had resigned so now she has to be elected again so just so that you have that information and know what's going on uh, also those who wish to run for the board See Peggy Everett, raise your hand back there, or Mike Nichols. Uh, they will give you a paragraph out of our um, bylaws in which uh, your duties are explained. Okay, so if you're interested in that, see, see one, either Peggy Everett or Mike Nichols. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Our usual uh, goings on. Uh, our uh, Tai Chi classes on Wednesdays and uh, on the <clears throat> second Friday of each month we have uh, game day. Uh, Thursdays we have, the well, first Thursday of each month we have the drumming circle. For those who want to get involved in that, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and is there anything else that I've missed in the way of the bulletins? Anybody have anything to add? Okay. Choir practice? Today. Very good. Thank you. And also, I wanted to make a, a note. We have uh, some of the um, uh, booklets that are available for, is it Carson's, the name of it? And, and what they do is they have a four-day sale on Wednesday through Saturday uh, on November 9th through the 12th. Uh, and that's out at, is that the Partridge Creek Mall, where they're located? Uh, what they do is they give out these booklets to uh, organizations that want to use it for fundraising. I think uh, Unity East collects like $5 for this, which all goes to the church. Uh, and then inside of it, the first page, I think, is a $5 or $10, uh, $10 certificate that you can use uh, uh, at the store. I know uh, Peggy and I went out, was it last year? Uh, and uh, she bought a nice uh, uh, kitchen utensil for a fraction of the cost because it was on sale. So it's it's really a good deal. You can't beat it. The only thing is, it's November 9th through the 12th. So it's not, if you buy it today or, or, or pick one up today, you won't be able to run out and use it. You have to wait until November 9th through the 12th when they run the special on it. But it, it's a terrific uh, bargain. Oh, is that right? You can shop online? Oh, wow, there you go. No excuses now. 
All right. Well, now that we, I think we've got everything out of the way, let's all get everything off our laps, uncross our arms and legs, get in a comfortable position uh, as we ask our uh, guest speaker, John Considine, to lead us in singing and praying the Lord's Prayer in our meditation. So I want to make this meditation as meaningful for you as possible. So by show of hands, uh, I, I, can do, I can do a Myrtle Fillmore healing meditation. You know who Myrtle Fillmore is, co-founder of Unity. Do a co I can do a Myrtle Fillmore healing meditation. I can do a Zen meditation, or I can lead you in a typical Unity meditation. Show of hands, who would like the Myrtle Fillmore healing meditation? Okay. Who would like the typical Unity, Unity meditation? Would like a Zen meditation. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I invite you to close your eyes and put your feet flat on the floor. It's always best to either have your hands palms up or, or, or just down in your lap, but not intertwining the fingers. Great meditation teacher once said, crossed fingers, crossed mind. And so we leave our hands alone, palms up or down. I invite you to take three or four deep breaths with me. Relax. Relax into the spirit of peace, the spirit of love in you and around you. And so we start as Myrtle started, in the heart. Oh, my heart, I love you so much. I know that the presence of God is within each cell of my heart. I thank you, my wonderful heart, for all you do for me. Every moment of the day and night, you're there keeping me alive. You're also the source of such inspiration to my heart chakra. I'm so grateful to you, my heart. We focus on the area of the heart for just a moment with gratitude. In my arteries and veins, the presence of God flows within each cell of my blood and I'm so grateful. I breathe deeply into my arteries and veins all over my body, all through my body. You're so great. I, I'm so appreciative. I love you so much. Thank you for all you do for me. And now your lungs. Focus your 
attention on your lungs. Ah, I know that the presence of God is within all of my lungs, all the cells of each lung. That presence, that spark of divine life is there within my lungs. I'm so grateful for all you do for me. Thank you so much. My digestive tract, from my mouth down to my tummy, from my mouth down to my stomach, I'm so grateful for my taste buds, my tongue, my throat, my teeth, the canal going down to my stomach, I'm so grateful for you. The presence of God is within each cell of my digestive tract. That awesome loving presence, I'm so grateful to you. And now from my stomach all the way down to the bottom of my, my digestive tract, my intestines, my colon. So grateful to you for all you do for me. Without my even consciously being aware, the presence of God is within each cell of my digestive tract. I take a deep breath and express my gratitude for you. My kidneys, thank you so much for all you do for me. I'm so grateful for your cleansing role. My liver, thank you so much. You're awesome. The presence of God is within each cell of my liver. And I breathe into that presence and express my love for you, my gratitude. My reproductive organs, thank you so much for all you, you do and mean and have been for me. Thank you so much. The presence of God is within each cell of my reproductive organs. Thank you so much. My brain, the presence of God is within each cell within each molecule, within each atom that creates the tissues of my brain. I breathe deeply and celebrate my brain. Awesome organ. Awesome power of God within my brain. Thank you so much for all you do for me. My senses, to the extent that I have them or am able to use them, eyes, ears, feeling a sense of touch, hearing, seeing, tasting. I'm so grateful to you for all you do, or try to do for me. I love you, I bless you, I so appreciate you. All the organs in my trunk. Including the important organs of my immune system. I take a deep breath and just give you thanks and love. I'm aware of the presence of God within each cell of my immune system. Within each cell of the trunk of my body. the largest organ in my body, my skin. Thank you so much. I bless each and every cell that contains the presence of God in my skin. Thank you so much, divine being that covers me, holds it all together here. Take a deep breath and I'm so grateful for the love and the presence of God within my body. Take a deep breath, as I am so grateful for the healing presence of the divine, which I quicken with my love and attention. I'm grateful for the healing presence. I shall endeavor to be healthy all winter, healthy all year, as I focus, as did my elder sister Myrtle, Myrtle Fillmore. 
teaching me how to be in loving, healing relationship with my body. Take a moment and bless any part of your body which needs special attention. Don't forget your hands, feet, legs, anything that we've forgotten so far of which you are aware. Giving special attention to any area which needs it. thanks for the presence of God in my life. I give thanks for the presence of God in my body. Ah, thank you, thank you, God. So be it, and so it is. Laham to life. I'm so blessed. coming forward. I think we have a member from the choir coming forward to do a special number for us. Marina is. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> sure. Good morning, everybody. Well, I want to share today something on a personal note. Um... <coughs> 22 years ago, um, on October the 25th, which is a couple of days from today, my beloved mother lost her courageous battle with cancer, and she was only 56. And um, not a day goes by that I don't think about her. She was kind, caring, the most loving person that I have ever known. Um, I am thankful to her for everything, but also for um, the fact that that was her idea, actually, for me to enter the music field. And that was her idea for me to start learning how to play piano. And um, so I will be playing one of her favorite pieces, and she loved everything that I played because she was my number one fan, of course. <laughs> But um, that was one of her most favorite pieces that is a Nocturne in E-flat major by Chopin. And I would like to dedicate it to her loving memory as well as the loving memory of all mothers who made their transition and also the ones that are still living and gracing this world with their presence.
you can see why that uh, was one of her favorites. That's so beautiful. Thank you. You did a wonderful job. It's amazing the classical music when you sit down, take the time, sit down and listen to it. How moving it can be emotionally. It's uh, amazing stuff. Uh, a lot different than the Beatles songs. <laughs> okay, well, now it comes time to introduce our guest speaker. John Constantine has been here before and is a wonderful speaker. Uh, and I enjoy his, his uh, experience, but his knowledge in spirituality that he brings to the platform. So with that being said, let's give John Constantine a warm Unity East welcome. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. I think that says, what, 10.30? What time do you have? 10.30, good, okay. I had some cataract surgery recently that did not go as well as expected, so it's all very strange. Um, but it's healing. They had to inject, it, 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 am I hearing feedback? Are you okay? Yeah, and so they had to inject some steroids in my eye, which have not totally cleared yet. So if I, and you're like very shiny to me, which is a strange way to see a congregation, it's all this shininess. If I put these on, it's not because I want to be cool, um, but it helps me see it better quite often, and I may have to do that. Well, it's so great to be back here. It truly is. Wow. Just wow. Just wow. Your mom was here and enjoyed that thoroughly with my mom. My mom was an opera singer. They probably enjoy each other's company, and she was terrific, too. Wow. You know, I used to play the piano a lot as a child, and I played classical as well as ragtime and that kind of thing. And I could really move my fingers and do those trills that you, you have those trills mastered. You're wonderful with that. Truly, like, brrr, like great. Let me tell you, never quit. Because I tried to play trills recently. I, I, tried to play, I tried to play trills recently, and it's like having big logs. Boom, 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 boom. Picture big Tootsie Rolls. I mean, don't ever quit, you can't quit. <laughs> One more round of applause. So terrific. Well, I had a great talk written for this morning, and then I got up this morning, and it sometimes happens, I got a different, my divine friend within and around me had a different idea for my talk, so I'm not too sure what it's going to be today, but it'll be a little bit different than what I had planned. You know, Jack Boland, how many have heard of Jack Boland? How many ever met Jack Boland? I, well, okay, a lot of you, yeah. So Jack was my mentor uh, for a number of years. And, um, and you know, do you know when he wrote his talks? He'd wake up at 2 in the morning, on Sunday morning, and he'd say, okay, God, what are we talking about today? No fooling. He was that good. National, for the, if you didn't know him, he was international, one of the finest speakers in the world. Not just in uni, but in the world. A tremendous speaker. And uh, I met him when I was at Uni of the Palm Beaches, and uh, we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of our minister, and, they, and he said, I asked him as a board chair, I said, what would you like? To, he said, I'd like to have Jack Boland come. I said, Jack who? He said, he explained to me. And so I called Jack, and sure, he flew in. I said, wow, this guy. So then Jack became my mentor. And um, yeah, and, and so anyways, that's when Jack wrote his talk. And often that's what happens. I get my best inspiration, too. Um, early in the morning, um, I, w I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the connection between happiness and Thanksgiving, since Thanksgiving's on its way, correct? There's a, a serious connection about that. Um, Abraham Hicks says that everything we do is ultimately, everything that you and I do in our lives is ultimately because we think it will lead us to happiness. Even committing crime, committing any kind of sin you can think about, doing something that makes you happy, it's all ultimately because you want to feel some happiness. You want to feel some joy. Um, and in unity, I've been involved in unity since 1980. I bet a bunch of you have as well. But you've been around unity a long time. How many, how many here are new to unity like in the last three years? Excellent, excellent. Congratulations, you've come to the right place. This is an amazing, this is not just entertainment on Sunday morning. This will transform your life, you know that. It will transform your life, it's amazing stuff. Very powerful stuff. Very transformational, life-changing, life-altering stuff. Um, but, um, uh, 
In unity, traditionally, we have been taught to follow and to watch our thinking, correct? Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Perfect, great, you've had some great teaching here. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. That's, that's, that's the law of mind action. So we've been taught to pay attention to your thinking. I don't know about you, but I have discovered uh, in my process over the last 30, 35 years of watching my thinking that th thoughts are cunning, baffling, and powerful. Th thoughts, of, like some diseases, like alcoholism, alcoholism is said to be cunning, baffling, and powerful. Thoughts are the same way. They're cunning, baffling, and powerful. You can't always get right to them. You can't often see them quickly enough before the damage is done and you're, you're spiraling down a particular way and when you get to the bottom of that spiral, you go, okay, I gotta change my thinking. There's a way to do it quicker, much more quickly, much more effectively, much more powerfully. And I know that probably many of you, or maybe all of you have heard of this, but this is like a reminder for, for, for many and maybe news for some, some of us. Abraham Hicks suggests this, rather than trying to pay attention to your thinking, pay attention to your feelings and your emotions. Those are gross um, indications of what your brain is doing, what your mind is doing. It's like the early warning system. It's like an early detection system. Oh, but something in the pit of my stomach. What's going on? Because here's the thing. Thoughts will produce your emotions. Most normally, there's some Freudian analysts who disagree with this, but there's, it can be said, it can be posited, that your thoughts a thought produces every feeling, every emotion you have. If you're feeling sad, you had a thought about maybe losing someone or something. If you're feeling afraid, you're, you're, you've been thinking about what might happen in the future. If you're feeling regretful, well, you know, you've been thinking about in, something in the past. Um, feeling angry, well, you know what that's about. You have thoughts about other people or about yourself or whatever. So, I want to suggest you try this. There's a great quote, and I don't remember the whole quote, but it's by a guy named Edmund Spencer. Um, and in fact, many say it wasn't by Edmund. Edmund Spencer scholars say, no, Edmund never said this. But whatever, whoever said it, it's a great quote nonetheless. He said, there is a principle or, or, or practice which is a bar to all progress in life, and that principle is contempt prior to investigation. Now, that, now some of you know the quote, you go, that's not the quote. I, I know, but it's close. It's the close to the quote. So I invite you to consider the possibility in your own life this week to pay attention to your feelings and your emotions and then to do something magical. This is such great advice. It changed my life. I heard it about eh, four years ago. Reach for a better feeling thought. Reach for a better feeling thought. What's a better feeling thought? A thought that makes you feel better. Yeah, it's a thought that makes you feel better. Do you, now, when you feel like uh, in your stomach, do you have to go analyze what that's all about? Well, you can go to a psychotherapist to work with that for a couple of years and do that, and it's, it's often good to do. I've done that. You don't, but you don't have to. You don't have to go and say, why am I feeling this way? Why am I so angry? Why am I so sad? You could, but you don't have to. And then my friend Marianne Williamson would say, of course, the miracles ask, who's there to forgive? That's a good practice. Who is there to forgive? Excellent practice. And then forgive them and let on. That, that, by the way, is a better feeling thought, if you think about it. Who is there to forgive? What, it's like you take responsibility suddenly, you're taking responsibility for this sadness or this anger, and you're saying, who do I have to forgive, dear God? So that is, in itself, is a better feeling thought. Some of us I know in 12-step programs, I won't ask for a show of hands, but I'll raise my hand. I, mean, I qualify for a couple hundred of them. Um, out of the 257 out there. <laughs> so, uh, um, this too shall pass. Have you heard that before? This too shall pass. That's a great, better feeling thought. And often, when I am hit, boom, with something that knocks me for a loop. Had it happen the other day, over family plans for Thanksgiving, I was thrown for a loop. And I went into a tailspin, and I was into vendetta, and vengeance, and anger, and hurt, and pain. And I said, oh God, I gotta, Quickly, I've, learned, I've trained myself to, before 16 seconds, 16 seconds is a magical figure, I'll tell you why in a second. Before 16 seconds, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that thought and reach for a better feeling thought. And what I, what I went, where I went to, thank God I went to it, is I said, this too shall pass. 
this too shall pass. You've been ang this angry before in these circumstances, and you've always gotten, it's always gotten better somehow. Let's go to the presence of God. Let's pay attention to what God might have for us. Then I just started asking God for guidance. And I was just so, thank you, God, for your presence in my life. Just something to move me up the emotional scale. Doesn't have to be about God, though. Don't think this is about how to pray better. It's about how to think a better feeling thought. Or the importance of thinking a better feeling thought. Why? It pulls you up the emotional scale towards happiness. And why is happiness so important? Well, it's like the ultimate ambition of every human being, isn't it? Isn't it how you'd, which, how, how would you rather be, happy or not so happy? Show of hands, who's for happy? Yeah, who's for not so happy? Good, well, if that makes you happy, fine. Um, so, so, by the way, I had a, I stopped, I had a cup of coffee on the way over here. I had a cup of, I asked for a cup of decaf with a little bit of, a little bit of regular, because I can't have any more regular, I can only have a little bit. And I think they gave me all regular. <laughs> and so, if, if you're one of those who's caffeine sensitive, you might know what I'm going through right now. <laughs> Plus, the eyes. <laughs> I got a scar here. <laughs> you know, let me give you a list of my st stuff that's wrong with me. Yeah. It's getting better. God, thank you. I know it's getting better. <laughs> I'll make it through this. I did ask for God for help because I get so crazy with this with caffeine. I didn't didn't plan that at all. I like a little bit, but not much. Anyways, God bless that fellow at McDonald's who did that. He didn't. Lord, he did not know what he was doing. Reach for a better feeling thought. Because it leads you to happiness. Happiness has been shown. There's a book by a Harvard psychologist named Sean Achor, A-C-H-O-R. If you want to give a, yourself a gift for Christmas, Sean, S-H-A-W-N, Achor, A-C-H-O-R, wrote a book called The Happiness Advantage. It's a, a report on, and it's a fun, easy reading report on all the studies that have been done about the science of happiness done by the, by the there's a bunch of um, like Columbia, Harvard, and Princeton and other uh, typically very up, I, may, I think University, University of Michigan has it as well, I think, a school of positive psychology. Not just like what's wrong with you psychology, but how do you get happier? How do pe have people, they ask the question, how do people get so happy? What, what's the importance of happiness in their lives? What causes happiness, and what Sean Acor says is what Werner Erhard and others were saying 30, 40 years ago, and what the sages have been saying for millennia, that you don't get happiness by attaining something. You attain something by starting with happiness. It starts with being. It starts with how you're being. By being happy, by de it's, a, it's a decision. Oh, there's a great quote here by one of the scientists. Scientifically, Acor says, happiness is a choice. It is a choice about where your single processor brain will devote finite resources, your mind, as uh, we'll devote, over again, Scientific, scientifically, happiness is a choice. It is a choice about where your single processor brain will devote final, finite resources as you process your world. Okay, so you have your five senses that we just prayed for a few minutes ago. They are taking in four billion bits I think of information every minute or something or something like that. A lot of information flowing in, and you're, you're going to process it somehow. And there's a couple, numerous, there's numerous powerful ways that process it. We process this data that comes in. One powerful way is through complaint, the filter of complaint. You have filters, and we filter with complaint. We default to complaint. Anyone besides me do that? Where you find yourself complaining in your brain a lot, complaining in your mind a lot about this one and that one. My Aunt Tilly was a, was a famous complainer. She was one time sitting in humid South Florida um, with her air conditioning turned off and uh, with the windows open. And she said to my father, ah, it's so hot here. I can't stand this South Florida. It's horrible. My father said, well, close your windows, Tilly, and turn the air conditioner on. What, she said, and destroy this beautiful breeze? <laughs> You can't make that up. <laughs> True story. And my Aunt Tilly, who came from Detroit, moves to Tilly Mariana. 
Came from the east side, by the way, too. Anyways, <laughs> you might know her. <laughs> what a piece of work. So a filter of complaint or a filter of looking for what to be happy about. That's a powerful, that's a transformational, a transformative filter which you can put over the, your senses. Looking for what to be grateful for. What can I be grateful for? Why, why do you ask that, that question? Why do you, do you want to be grateful? What, what's the importance of gratitude? Because Sean Aker found, and a lot of the positive psychology studies have found that the power, that gratitude is a magnificent way to get to being happy. Hugely important, hugely important. The importance of happiness is not just through some, you know, goofy new age thought that it's better to be happy or happiness leads to money, but they actually did studies about happy people. Um, they made, they took a room full of doctors, let's say, I don't know how many it was, but maybe of 30, 40 doctors, and half the doctors, they gave them a set of a, a diagnostics, a fact sheet. The patient has this, the patient has that, the patient has this, the patient has that. What's the diagnosis? And they gave it to them. Another group, they surprised them with a beautiful piece of chocolate, a wonderful piece of chocolate. And they were all like, oh, how nice. They primed them to feel good about themselves in, in, for a few moments. And then they gave them the same fact sheet. They said, what's your diagnosis? And they timed both groups. The group who had been primed to feel happy, even if just for a minute or two, were tw either 19, I'm trying to remember the study, 19 or to 21 percent more effective in reaching a diagnosis much quicker than the group that was not primed, primed for happiness. Equally qualified doctors. The only difference is that this group was primed for being happy, at least for those few moments. I don't mean happy eternally or happy totally, but just like you know, a good frame of mind. And they, they talk about so many things like you're, when, when you're happy, when you're feeling good about life and you're in a state of joy, put a smile on your face right now and start to feel that. You know, when you, put, when you start to smile, that actually lead, that behavior leads your mind to, oh, time to be happy then, okay. I'll. So it's like, it might take a few minutes, but fake it till you make it works with, with smiles and happiness. So you start with being happy, um, but with, 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 with the importance of, with, ugh, was I going with this? You start with a desire to be happy, and your peripheral vision will actually increase. Your studies have been done that show that peripheral vision actually increases when you're happy. How many other senses are heightened as well? I'm sure other studies will find out and probably have it, and I just haven't read them yet. That book, Happiness Advantage, is an easy read. It's funny, and it's funny. The guy also has a TED Talk, which you could find online, but I would, I'd read the book. The book's amazing. Abraham Hicks says, if you would stop analyzing everything, Abraham Hicks, is, by the way, is, the, is who came up with this idea of reaching for a better feeling thought. I'm quoting them when I say that. Reach for a better feeling thought. If you would stop analyzing everything, like I want to, if you would stop analyzing everything and just look for things to appreciate, you would live happy ever after. You would live happily ever after. But we want to analyze, why am I feeling this way? Why did she do that to me? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with our church? Why, is, why are things happening this way? And you know, you talk about what's wrong with our church. Gosh, there was this great thing. I went to the Unity Convention eight years ago in Kansas City, the Unity Village, or near, well, not Overland Park, actually. But I stayed, I always stay at the village. How many have been to the village? Oh yeah, isn't that great? Isn't it a wonderful place to go? Put on your bucket list, the rest of you. Go spend uh, three, four, five days at Unity Village, preferably in the spring with the flowers or the, or the summer. It's amazing. Ooh. Where did this go? Sorry about that. So, where was I going with that? What did I just say? Hmm? Yeah, was that, oh, oh, yeah, thank you. Appreciative inquiry. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for helping me today. I'm so grateful. I'm kind of making this talk up as I go along, you know, as, as the Spirit guides me. And so, Appreciative inquiry was suggested. 
for corporations. Uh, there was a, I think Colgate University came up with this whole process called appreciative inquiry. What do I appreciate about this organization? What do I appreciate about my family? Rather than catching them wrong, doing what's wrong, look for what's right. Look for what's right. It's very powerful. Uh, there was a, they, they, the Colgate University people went out and they actually did this in a, for like a tire kingdom kind of a company. And they said, have you, have you, have you talked to um, your, uh, your, your, your customers about your company, about your service? Oh, yes, we did, a, we did one, uh, a survey of our customers, and we found out all that we were doing wrong, and we, put it, we posted it over the, in the employee's bulletin board, all that we're doing wrong. And it, business went down. Yes, said Colgate University, we're doing something different called appreciative inquiry. We want to, and they took, they, they were allowed to do it, they took a survey of all their customers and said, what do they do right? What do you like about this, this company, this tire company? And they had all these things that they, lo that they loved about it. They posted that in the employee bulletin board, told the employees, hey, look at that, isn't that great? The employees, their vibrational frequency, who knows what that term means, vibrational frequency? Yes, their vibrational frequency went up. And guess what? That company's business increased over the next year because they were focused upon what's right with us rather than what's wrong with us. Gratitude, appreciation. Will you do that in your life? Will you do that in your life? Your life can be better. Dorothy Pearson used to say, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come in your life, as good as you are. As wonderful as your life is, as good, things are, as good as things are for you, the best is yet to be, is what Dorothy used to say, great uni minister out in Sacramento, California. The best is yet to be in your life. That's right. Yes, it is, indeed it is. It's, it starts with, I recommend to you, it starts with a desire to be happy and uh, always reaching for a better feeling thought. I'll give you one, leave you with one story. Harry. Harry Hamilton, he won't mind me talking about, about him. He'll appreciate that I'm talking about him. Her, Harry Hamilton, at the age of 14, living on the streets, abusive family, ran away from home, horrible family life, prostituting himself on the streets just to get by, horrible life, had no chance, into rehab and out of rehab back on the streets, into rehab and out of rehab back on the streets. 10, 11, 12 times. Finally, it worked in the 12th time. Imagine that, in the 12th time, it worked. Fast forward, many years later, 50 years later, I'm sitting in Harry Hamilton's office on the 22nd floor of his building, which he ultimately sold for $28 million. It's like, what was, yeah. Well, he got sober. Many people get sober, and they don't end up on the 22nd floor of their own building if they sold for $28 million. What was the difference? Well, he had a belief, I'm sure. He had a passion for, what, for real estate, that kind of thing, I'm sure. He, he, had, you know, he had passion and belief, but he had one other thing that he preached about all the time. I'm sitting in his office on the 22nd floor looking out at the ocean, the bank of windows there. And we're talking, he's giving me advice, because I listen to Harry, and, and the phone rings. He said, I have to get this call. He picked up, oh. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That really happened? Oh, it's terrible. Let me ask you a question. What are you grateful for? Oh, isn't that nice? That's great. What else are you grateful for? Tell me three things you're grateful for. And he congratulated this person. And off the phone, he came back to talk, and he said, the person I sponsor. I just had, I mentor. I, I had to, yeah. So we talked a while longer. Phone rings again. I have to take this call. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, let me ask you a question. What are three things you're grateful for? And he did this repeatedly. You know why, and what they call him now? Grateful Harry. <laughs> Whatever, wherever he goes, he speaks publicly. He's passed on this past week, and I kind of dedicate today to, to Grateful Harry. He died at 94. Hugely successful. Huge, made a difference in the lives of so many people by doing one thing, talking about the power and the importance of gratitude. And I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Sean Acor says so in The Happiness Advantage. The, the Bible says so. In all things, give thanks and praise, it says. In Thessalonians, I think, 1 Thessalonians. In all things, 
give thanks and praise. The, the sages knew it way back then, thousands of years ago. Grateful Harry certainly knew it and preached it. And Sean Acor and the positive psychologists are going, hey, guess what? <laughs> it's wise to be grateful. You know, just like they said back in the ancient days. How about you? Would you take it upon yourself to be 10% more grateful this, this week than you've been, ever been before? And, and to watch and to see how, what it does to your life, to always reach for a better feeling thought. And I want to give you, I want to, Abraham, Abraham Hicks says, that better feeling thought can be something as simple as this really sucks. This really stinks. That's a better feeling thought. It like, it, it like gets you out of the snit of how, if I'm wrong to feel this way, you just go, yeah, this really stinks. And the next one can easily be, ah, but this too shall pass. God will show me a way, might be another way. Walk yourself up. So will you try that this week to always look for a better feeling thought and to be committed to being happy and to watch not your thoughts, but your feelings for sure. Will you try that? Yeah, awesome. You made my day. Thanks so much. Let's go to prayer. Ah, thank you, Father, Mother God, for your presence in my life. Thank you, Mother, Father God, for your presence at Unity East. Blessing this board of trustees, blessing this congregation, blessing each and every person in this room and all those that we hold dear. I'm so grateful for gratitude, the power of thanksgiving. Between now and thanksgiving, I'd like to be so attentive to my feelings. I'd like to be so attentive to always being grateful and to finding things to be grateful for. So I can be just as successful with my family as possible, just as successful a, a human being as possible, just as successful in business, in love, in relationships, in service in my community, just as successful in my participation in my spiritual life. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Did I tell you it would be a powerful message? Uh, John always comes through on that. And there was a time in my life when I was convinced that my happiness depended on other people in life situations because that's where it was until I realized it has nothing to do with any of that. And I used to have a, a sign in my office, a little poster, and it was attributed to Abraham Lincoln. And the quote was, a person is just about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Very powerful stuff. We appreciate that. Let's take our tithes, our offerings into our hands, and let's give this in happiness. Let's give it in love, because that's how it works. That's the, that's the grease, that's the energy that makes it happen, that makes everything flow in life and come back to us. As we read together on the back of the envelope, together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Yeah, I already broke a leg, so not, not really. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a fun song. It'll be fun for me because I'm going to sing it. No, I'm not the person I should be. Put 
talent. We've got it all over the place here at Unity East Church, and we certainly appreciate it. Uh, John, would you like to uh, uh, give an offering, a uh, blessing on our offering here today? Sure. Well, we give thanks for this abundance that's outpouring into our lives of spiritual energy in the form of money, and we pledge and promise that this spiritual energy in the form of money shall be used for our transformation, for the transformation of all those who are coming in our direction now, and the transformation ultimately of all humankind. We give thanks for the abundance for our church. We give thanks now for the abundance in our lives. As I give, so do I receive. Together, as I Thank give, you. so, so do, do I, I receive. receive. Thank you, God. I'm so grateful for my abundance. Thank Amen. You. Thank Amen. you, God. I'm so grateful for my abundance. Together, Thank, Thank you, God. God. I am so, so grateful, grateful for my abundance. abundance. Amen. 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 You betcha. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, this becomes a, a special part of the day for us. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors here to Unity East Church? Very first time? No? We're all family here? We're all friends? Good. Well, in that case, let's get together and sing our peace song. God surrounds us, 
The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.